All right, let's talk commodities, crude oil, and how it's connected to geopolitics with Vikas Devetti joining us from Macquarie Group, global energy strategist. Vikas, thanks for being here with us on the Schwab Network this afternoon. Thank you for having me. Appreciate that. Uh, all right, so been a, quite a year for crude oil. Just starting with the price dynamics, have you viewed its ascent as being supply driven through constraints or a demand from the global economy? Yeah, it's um, been a combination of geopolitical factors with all the you know well-known uh, regional issues in the Middle East and Russia, Ukraine. Um, and uh, some supply demand factors, maybe to the heart of your question, um, demand has been good despite all the uh, natural challenges of a high price of oil, high refining margins, you know, dollar um, and general inflation. Those would actually be a terrible set of ingredients for demand. And yet demand has held up pretty well. Yeah. Um, um, the amazing. others. Yeah. Right. Um, the other source of strength is we've had um, an unusual number of supply outages, uh, not anything that's lasted, but, you know, they, they add up just nicks and cuts on the supply side. And I think together it's created a bit of a tighter market. Right now at uh, 85 bucks, WTI getting pretty close to one year highs. How do you think these dynamics add up for price? Uh, it, what's the range that seems reasonable to you? Yeah, um, we can see a little bit more follow through on this rally. Um, you know, we are looking for uh, kind of a top of about 95 Brent and low 90s WTI. After that, we think supporting a rally through fundamentals will, be, will become difficult because there's a lot of oil out there, right? OPEC has uh, north of 4 million barrels a day of spare capacity. Uh, the U.S. is still growing. I think a lot of people constantly bet against the U.S. shale growth, and they're wrong every year. They've been wrong for 10 years. Uh, this will be another year where I think the market underestimates how big U.S. shale will grow. And then other regions of the world are showing some supply growth as well. So underneath the wars and the tension, geopolitics, um, there's actually still a lot of oil supply coming to the market as the year goes on. Okay. And uh, regionally, as you point out, people generally doubt the U.S. Uh, who else should we be looking for to pick up supply? And we think OPEC will come back with some of their cuts and put those barrels back in the market. You know, probably a million a day uh, from a um, directed point of view. And then they'll have some Saudis? slippage. Uh, yeah, Saudi. Yeah. And then uh, other countries, though, will probably put more barrels in through non-compliance. I think mean, compliance for OPEC, uh, although it's been decent lately, it's uh, the toughest era for their compliance because so many of the members have diverging uh, budget needs and perspectives. Uh, meaning, you know, if the uh, peak oil demand is coming in the next few years, we can say it's 10 years, 15, but it's not 50. You may as well get the oil out of the ground and monetize it. You know, it's not worth a whole lot after the peak is, mm. is a view. Yeah. Uh, well, I remember our last conversation, you kind of talked to us about uh, supply dynamics as being supportive for price. Uh, but once price, you know, moves or holds, people want to take advantage of it. Um, <laughs> the uh, yeah. geopolitics in the Middle East, the Iran, the Israel situation, uh, Israel, Gaza. I mean, how do you monitor that? What are like for our everyday investors, like armchair investors, what are like the key words? What are the themes that we're watching for to know if it actually is going to move price in a dramatic way? Yeah, great question. Uh, the way we monitor it is uh, kind of a multifaceted uh, approach. And we, we try not to put too much weight on any one event. Okay. We think what we've had so far is somewhat controlled sparring. But the sparring is escalating. You know, I think the punches are now becoming harder. Uh, it's getting more intense. So the, the, the real risk is that you go from a controlled sparring to something that's out of control and it could overflow into war. But in our uh, analysis, and we have a lot of interesting uh, geopolitical colleagues, the view is that nobody in the region really wants an all out war. It's not in the interest of uh, really anybody involved, Iran, Saudi Arabia, um, you know, the Chinese are the biggest buyers of, of Middle East crude. They're gonna influence it to not have a war. Obviously the US doesn't. 
So um, we, we think that will prevail, but there is a risk, right? There's a lot of weapons, a lot of people there, yeah. and you could lose control. That's uh, So what we're looking for the trend and not any one event to, I think the market tends to put too much weight on every single event. And then, you know, oil rallies and it trades off when we find out that that event is not going to result in a war. Um, but um, that's the approach. OK, great to catch up, Vikas. Thanks for coming back. Thank you. Absolutely. Vikas Devetti from the Macquarie Group.